Hello and welcome to another mini series on Unreal Engine. Um, this is going to be a remake of a few things or a combination of a few things I've done before, but just in a different context. So if I first of all start off uh, showing what the end result would be, um, we have a third person character example and this is a regular movement controller really. What I did was to combine some of the stuff from uh, the iKinema tutorial I have. So there will be a bit of um, um, setup for the iKinema rig. We already did this and it's pretty straightforward so there's nothing really new to this. Just combining these things. And I guess this can be done technically without using iKinema. It's just going to be in a slightly different way. Um, so this example I have running here is going to be using iKinema um, and we're also going to be building the buttons you can see on the on the, um, on the wall here. So when we approach the wall we can see the various buttons highlight when we look at them and also when we um, want to press a particular one, this one, it's going to actually uh, click that exact button at the exact uh, location where he is, uh, the button is at. So a few uh, com components that we'll be making in this series is first of all going to be uh, the button itself, this little guy here. And we'll also be making the button panel, which has, is uh, holding the button itself. And we will um, see how we can put in a little sound I just picked up on the internet somewhere. But you can just go ahead and record that from whatever, if you have a contact in your room or something, um, might do that as well. Um, and then we're also going to be making uh, an animation. So this is an uh, animation I recorded with my uh, Kinect 2 using iPy Studio. And we'll also be creating a curve down here to control the um, point in the animation when he should be reaching for that exact goal where the button is. Um, and also um, we will be making the, um, a very basic material. So for example this is the outer ring. So this is a slightly metallic ring around the button um, and the panel. with a highlight and a parameter and show how we can use that to highlight our uh, button or the panel when we look at it. And finally we're also going to show how, or take a look at how we can create a very simplified version of um, the interactable um, setup I've done in a previous video also. Just this time I will not go take the time to uh, pack everything together. So it's going to be pretty easy to see because it's uh, all going to be in one spot basically. So um, that's just a slightly different way and then you can go ahead and refactor this afterwards uh, to your liking. Okay, so um, let's see how we can get started with this. Uh, I created a but push button tutorial here. So this is um, the beginning, uh, what we get when we load up the third person example. And there's nothing particular to this. Um, so this is the starting point. So if you're following along, you should uh, create a similar project. And I hope you know how to do that. Um, what I like to do uh, before I do anything is to drag the, from inside the third person BP folder, I like to drag that up to the mannequin folder. And inside the mannequin folder, I like to drag out the third person NMBP as well to the mannequin folder. So that way I have access to these two um, assets easily in the same folder because I uh, use them often together uh, by uh, switching in between them. Okay. And also like to make a little setup here. So I open them up and make sure they open up in a different tab here. Okay, 
So in this video, we're not going to be making too much except for some preparations, which I think is going to make things a little bit easier. I'm going to get rid of this touch input. I don't need that. And this uh, VR stuff I don't need, and the gamepad stuff we don't need either. So it's going to clean up the space here a little bit. And let's see. Um, if you want to make uh, folder structures to keep the stuff here uh, separate from the stuff that you um, get from the example template, uh, you might as well create a folder here called push button. Uh, and that way you can put all your stuff in here so you know you can easily drag it out um, if you need it in a different project. Um, since we're going to be putting um, the like uh, the stuff about the push button inside uh, a separate folder in here, uh, what might also be a good idea is to have your uh, have a different folder. But I'm going to get back back to that uh, in a bit. Um, so where should we start? That's a good question actually, because you can start several places. Um, but what I did when I created this the first time was to go to uh, a 3D program. In this case, it's um, 3D Studio Max, and I'm still f trying to find my way uh, around in, inside 3D Studio Max. So I'm going to try and explain as good as I can um, how I built this button here. Um, now, the thing about uh, 3D Studio Max is it has so many uh, short cut keys and stuff uh, that you have to learn. So also in here I had to spend a lot of time figuring out what was the best um, setup for me. Um, but anyway, let's get started and start off with uh, creating a box. So we come in here and uh, just create a, a regular box uh, of some sort. It doesn't have to be precise, just any kind of box. And then right click. I have a shortcut key because uh, usually when I create anything in here, I like uh, things to have a, a particular color. So what I did was to bind a macro to set um, a gray color, uh, set a material. So I press M to bring up material. Um, I set it up to set, oops, not that one, uh, this one. Uh, I set it up to just pick a simple uh, gray color like this and assign that to my selection and also set uh, I have set uh, the default object color to black so this color in here uh, in case you're new to 3d studio max as I am um, this controls ends up controlling um, whoops uh, ends up controlling uh, the border as you can see here uh, the border so I like these to be black because it's a bit easier to see what's going on. Oops, forgot to select it. Okay, so with this button here, um, what I did was um, to create a few, um, two different um, objects really, um, and then uh, exported them separately. So the first one is the panel. So uh, in order to get this maybe a little bit more like a panel, I'm gonna scale it down. Um, I switch between the different gizmos here by pressing the default keys W, E, R. That's pretty standard in most, most applications. And the way I, in this case, I did this was to um, set this up um, as it's uh, looking right now. So I didn't um, turn it up like standing like this. I might uh, have done that, but I thought, okay, um, I can always rotate inside three um, inside Unreal. So anyway, um, first of all, uh, we should make sure that this is centered around the zero, uh, zero and zero. So that's gonna put it here. So when we import it, it's not gonna be offset in any weird way. Okay, and once we have the panel, uh, it's a, I think it's a good uh, good uh, practice to get into to rename your things. So this is gonna be the panel. And I'm also going to create uh, this um, holding thingy uh, um, cap around it. I don't know what you would call it. Uh, but we do that with a cylinder. Um, 
so I'm gonna drag that up a little bit and also make sure to recenter this um, somewhere here. Um, so it's just above here. So I might want to switch to the top view if I can figure out how to do that. Uh, Control T, I've set it to. I haven't really gotten used to my own shortcut keys yet, but uh, that's part of the this practice really. Um, to do uh, seemingly simple things and um, just keep doing them over and over on, until you get uh, more fluent uh, doing it. Okay, so what I'm doing here is um, just trying to place it on top of this uh, box really. And let me also rename this one. Um, button. I can't, I can't really figure out what the, the correct name for this is, but I called it a button cap. And let's just give this a uh, black material, just so that it uh, looks like a black material thingy. Um, okay, so since we have a, a, a huge end gone here, uh, all these are uh, quartz, uh, which we like to have in inside the game. Um, I must admit I haven't entirely figured out uh, what the um, particular reason is not to have these in guns, but I understand very clearly from watching a few videos that it's not uh, something you want um, in terms of shading and stuff. So what I'm going to do uh, here in this case is to switch to the modifiers tab here and just make sure that the height segment here is I don't need that many segments I'm just gonna um, set that to one and I'm gonna add a mo uh, edit poly modifier that's set here to a hotkey that's a very useful one this is set to in my case uh, all the E but you can set it to whatever you want and I'm not entirely sure what the default is and uh, then switch into um, edge mode I also have, you can press one, two, three to switch in between these three. And then uh, double click or um, uh, ring select. That's the same you get from pressing um, this one. Whoops. Um, nope, not that one. Um, this one, loop, no? I don't know. Um, anyway, you want to select the top one here. Uh, actually, you want to, what you want to do instead is to switch to the polygon and uh, select the top face here. And since we need uh, to insert this a little bit to create some details with the, the rounding around the button itself, um, what I'm going to do here is to uh, use the inset. Um, so the inset is found somewhere down here. I don't know why it decides to put it all the way down here, but you can see it in here, inset. And that allows you to click here and drag in a little bit. So let's just drag it in like this. So this is going to be the border. And if we just um, inset it just one more time, um, just very slightly, and push, the, push it down a little bit, we can already see this is going to start to look like this um, rounding ahead on my key uh, on my button okay so let's um, also insert it uh, one more time um, and pull it all the way in here, like here that's gonna give us triangles here um, and as far as I understand this is better than this huge end gone so what I do here is I switch to vertex mode uh, by pressing 1 and I zoom in and select all of these and I um, try to weld them. Um, and you can do that if you, I just do this right now by using a hotkey. And I can highly recommend trying to use hotkeys in the beginning, although, although it, it would be, um, it would be faster for you in the beginning to find these things uh, in the menus. I have these visible right now because I'm still trying to get used to things. Um, but you can find the world here and you can also find the world button here and you can adjust how what the threshold for welding is uh, by selecting this one. So that's going to make all these one vertex. Okay, 
And let's see, uh, since this is pretty square right now, I don't think um, it's going to look that pretty. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to select one of the edges here going around here. And uh, if you ring select, there's a ring here, the ring select is going to select everything around. And then you can uh, use the connect, um, where's the connect, it's um, there. Okay, and that's going to create a connection in, in between here. Um, so I have all that set to a number of keys. You can also bring up this um, connect edges instead. And that's the same you get from uh, clicking the, the little button out here. So here I select two segments and I am going to pinch them just like outwards like this and uh, hit OK. And from here on, I'm going to move this up just a little bit to give it a bit of rounding. And that's basically what I did. So this is not really that complicated. And um, I just wanted to do it like this because um, just to practice a few of these techniques like using the ring and connect tool and trying to figure out what the best way was to do a few things um, to, see, to get some practice with 3D Studio Max. So right now these two are two separate um, objects so I can select them individually like this right now and um, that's not really what I want in this case here so I'm gonna go to element and down here you can find attach so you can right now I have the button uh, cap selected I'm gonna attach this one to this one and um, do, match, do not modify all materials this one Great. Where did it go? Right. Um, sorry about that. Uh, how the heck do I combine these two? <laughs> oh, never mind. Um, okay. Touch, well, touch, match to match materials and material to Hmm. That's weird. Okay. Okay. Anyway, so I'm I'm not really sure. I have to look that up because I can't remember I had the, this uh, problem the first time. Anyway. I might just have forgotten. Um, so once I have an element mode, I can switch in between these two elements and they should have each their separate um, material ID. This one has material ID two and this has material ID one. So this means that when we bring this into Unreal Engine, they're gonna have each their separate um, material. Um, so I'm gonna end this video here by exporting this. Export, um, I have this button cap select. Oh, actually, the name is now bad. This is just bad button panel. Let's call it that. And I'm gonna go export selected and put it on my desktop. It's a regular FBX. And in here, I think. I didn't do anything with embed media there because I don't really need, I'm gonna do that stuff inside Unreal, uh, which is uh, the materials, I believe. Um, and the units, I have it set to centimeters because that's what Unreal Engine uses. And oh, this doesn't really matter, but, and you can choose whatever. I just have a habit of choosing 2016, 17. And that's really about it. So I'm just going to minimize this because we're also going to make the, the the button itself in the next video. But for now, I'm going to just import this so we can get something out of this video, except just listening to me talking. And just ignore that. <clears throat> 
So that, uh, from this we created a button that we now have access to put into the scene and here you can see it is lying on the floor for, uh, ready to be used. So um, in the next video we are going to create the, <clears throat> the, uh, the, bu the red button itself and uh, start to make the setup for the button itself. Okay, so thank you for watching and be seeing you in the next. Bye-bye.